Welcome to the presentation of the work on my PhD about methanol synthesis on copper zinc oxides from a theoretical perspective. Heterogeneous catalysis is highly important for industry as representing 90% of the chemical manufacturing processes. An example is the, is the synthesis of methanol on a heterogeneous copper zinc oxide catalyst at high temperatures and pressures. Methanol is a raw chemical synthesized in, the or, in, in amounts of the order of 60 million metric tons per year and in the future it may fuel a suggested methanol economy. The copper zinc oxide catalyst shows uh, consisting on copper nanoparticles supported on a zinc oxide matrix shows a high chemical complexity and properties unique to the combined system, so-called strong metal support interactions. In particular, environment dependent morphological changes were reported from experiment but also strain at the interface and the charge transfer effects. In the process of the synthesis of methanol, a highly reactive mixture gas of hydrogen, CO and CO2 is circulated on the catalyst. Experimental evidence showed that CO2 is the main carbon source for methanol. As well, Copper nanoparticles are the main active component and zinc oxide spaces the copper nanoparticles enhancing catalytic stability. But also zinc oxide shows catalytic synergy with copper enhancing catalytic activity. So uh, does zinc oxide play a role in the reaction mechanism? It was proposed for instance, that zinc oxide provides hydrogen atoms for the copper active sites or that it aids in the creation of special active sites. In addition, copper and zinc oxide separately also present activity toward methanol synthesis, although to a lesser extent. So uh, there are many factors adding to the complexity of copper zinc oxide. Therefore, atomistic insight is needed to improve the catalyst, thus making applications more efficient. To investigate this catalyst system, uh, I used a three-step systematic approach, which was previously used in studying the synthesis of methanol on bare zinc oxide. In the first step, and following the work by Bern Meyer, the catalyst model is optimized for a wide range of thermodynamic conditions. In the second step, the active morphology of copper zinc oxide toward uh, CO2 adsorption is obtained. CO2 adsorption at copper is activated by charge transfer from zinc oxide. In the third step, the reactivity from CO2 to methanol is explored by means of accelerated molecular dynamics, resulting in a complex reaction network. Computations were performed with density functional theory and the PVE functional. Plane waves were used in combination with pseudopotentials, and weak interactions between the adsorbate and the catalyst were included with the so-called Grimme D2 correction. The copper zinc oxide catalyst was modeled with a small copper 8 cluster supported on oxygen terminated polar zinc oxide. Using periodic boundary conditions, each supercell, as shown in the figure, contained about 160 atoms. In the first step, I asked the question, what are relevant morphologies for copper zinc oxide 
under catalytic conditions. To investigate that, I use the ab initio thermodynamics formalism, which relates DFT total energy calculations at zero Kelvin with a thermodynamic description of the gas phase. As a result, a thermodynamic stability phase diagram shown in the figure was obtained, including more than 50 different structures for copper zinc oxide with different number of hydrogen, oxygen and zinc atoms and also varying the shape of the cluster. In the phase diagram, the vertical axis represents the hydrogen partial pressure and the horizontal axis represents the oxygen partial pressure. At hydrogen poor conditions, labeled here as adsorbate free, clean zinc oxide and flat clusters are preferred. As the hydrogen content is, is increased until uh, catalytic conditions, um, surfaces much more populated by hydrogen and more spherical copper clusters are favored. At oxygen poor conditions, here labeled as O buck, indicating, indicating oxygen vacancies, uh, oxygen vacancies are preferred as stabilization mechanism of zinc oxide, but as the hydrogen content is increased, zinc atoms attached to the cluster, so-called zinc ad atoms, uh, overtake the oxygen vacancies to stabilize the surface. This is similar to experimental observations of brass formation. To obtain insight into the properties of these catalyst models, I analyzed the electronic structure. This figure represents the band structure and the density of states for three selected catalyst models. The attached line represents the Fermi level and bands labeled in red as B1 and B2 correspond to zinc oxide and copper bands respectively. The first electronic structure in the left corresponding to a model with a zinc ad atom shows empty B1 and B2 bands indicating a fully oxidized surface. On the other hand, the electronic structures on the right side corresponding to catalytic conditions show partially occupied B1 and B2 bands indicating a reduced surface. Overall, this figure shows a relationship existing between three aspects, one being the thermodynamic conditions of the gas phase, the second being the morphology of copper zinc oxide, and the third one being the electronic properties. In the second step, active morphologies of copper zinc oxide toward absorption of CO2 are obtained. To do that, the most stable absorption sites of CO2 on the three selected models were located. As a result, each, mo each morphology showed a different behavior uh, respect to absorption of CO2. In the fully oxidized model on the left, CO2 prefers to absorb on the zinc oxide surface and the B1 and B2 bands remain empty, whereas the zinc ad atom behaves as a zinc 2 plus cation, similar to zinc atoms on bulk zinc oxide. However, for the reduced model on the right side, CO2 prefers to absorb on the copper cluster with a considerably more stable absorption energy. And also, uh, the B1 and B2 bands show a shift in relative energy with respect to the CO2 free structure. This shift indicates uh, electronic charge transfer from zinc oxide to copper, which 
on one hand activates kappa toward the absorption of CO2, and on the other hand, stabilizes zinc oxide by oxidizing it. After having obtained the active morphologies at relevant thermodynamic conditions, in the third step I study the chemistry from CO2 to methanol. And for these, thermal effects need to be included, therefore calling for a dynamical approach. In particular, ab initio metadynamics was used, which allowed to sample the phase space. And this was done efficiently by a choice of collective variables which represent the chemistry of the synthesis of methanol. The figure shows the approximate free energy surface corresponding to the reactivity from CO2 to methanol. Each local minimum corresponds to different chemical species. Although computations were carried out for about 2 nanoseconds of simulation time, the free energy surface was not converged due to the high chemical complexity of the catalyst model. Still, from the underlying molecular dynamics trajectory, it was possible to extract chemical species and elementary steps, allowing to draw this complex uh, reaction network, which shows not only reactivity to methanol, but also the water gas shift reaction. Water gas shift reaction is highly relevant in the context of the synthesis of methanol, because copper zinc oxide is also active toward this reaction. It was possible to compare the chemical species obtained from the exploration to the main reaction mechanisms proposed in literature for uh, the synthesis of methanol on bare copper. The table shows that almost all intermediates proposed in the literature were uh, explored in my simulation. The very flexible method used captures not only methanol synthesis and water gas shift reaction, but also side reactions. For instance, formation of oxygen vacancies and full dissociation of CO bonds leading to CH species and carbonate formation. In addition, the copper cluster shows a highly dynamic behavior, continuously rearranging shape in response to changes in the chemical environment. The next few slides showcase some of the reactivity in my simulation. The reactivity at both copper and zinc oxides components could take place uh, independently. The upper figure shows the conversion of CO2 to formate taking place at the zinc oxide, and the lower figure shows a similar reaction but taking place on the cluster. Also, reactivity involving the copper zinc oxide interface was observed. The upper reaction shows uh, the protonation of chemisorbed CO2, and the lower reaction shows the conversion of physisorbed formaldehyde to methanol with hydrogen transfer from copper and from zinc oxide. In addition, the highly dynamic behavior of the cluster can be exemplified by the interaction of the carbon species with the cluster leading to detachment of individual copper atoms and also by the spontaneous creation of oxygen vacancies to stabilize the surface. With this approach, realistic, atomistic description of the copper zinc oxide catalyst was achieved, covering thermodynamics, electronic structure, and chemistry. The copper zinc oxide model 
represents well strong metal support interactions as observed in experiment. And also, environment dependent morphological changes over a wide range of thermodynamic conditions, which are only possible in the combined system. At catalytic conditions, reactivity of CO2 on the copper cluster is enhanced by charge transfer from reduced zinc oxide. In addition to these static properties, ultimate reactivity on copper zinc oxide is determined by dynamic processes on the surface, giving rise to a complex reaction network with a multitude of chemical species rather than one well-defined reaction pathway. The simulations show a highly dynamic nature of the copper cluster and also an interplay between copper and zinc oxide which should not be neglected in studies of the reactivity on copper zinc oxide. After having gained this insight, further work should consider resolution of individual pathways with a more tailored set of reaction coordinates. Also, one must take care of the oxidation state of the surface. I did not talk about that, but during the MD simulation, CO2 gets reduced and thus the catalyst gets oxidized, which under realistic conditions would be immediately re-reduced. Also, I showed that small copper clusters already capture well the chemistry of the synthesis of methanol, but this should be confirmed by using clusters of real sizes with extended facets and interface. Thanks for watching and please like the video if you enjoyed it.